Hey. We back. We back. Do, do, do. I don't want to touch that in case it pops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so we just got back from a beautiful sound healing, which I was so grateful for, for my friend Tom for sending it through to me. And then we got to go on and got to see one of the girls that I went to the Love Out Loud retreat with. She's a beautiful human and her friend Byron, who does crystal sound bowl healing was delicious just laying there and receiving it was just it was just amazing so slipping into the present mm, so much so that was a really cool thing everyone was like oh, i just want to be present yeah no shit <laughs> um so today's topic they left really wide open for us and there's so many ways that we could take this and there's so many delicious bits of conversation that we can have so we'll just we'll just mush it all in there and have a, have a throw right around um, so today's conversation was, is there 24 hours in the day? And, um, I think I kind of instantly start thinking about how I used to get a ridiculous amount done. Like everyone was always saying to me, how on earth do you get so much done in your day? Um, and to be honest, I was a total high achiever. Um, and it, it really was the old saying of, if you want to get something done, give it to someone who's already busy. And I, and I was that person. I was that person that would somehow manage to juggle a bajillion things at once and somehow got it all done but after a while it starts to burn the candle at both ends and I, and I stopped I lost all essence of presence mm -hmm. I lost all essence of self I lost all understanding of time hey Jason I lost a lot of a lot of me and so I s love the conversation about finding 24 hours in the day but I firmly believe that society has put upon us this belief and this energy that we need to do so much every day. To get stuck in the busyness. The busyness. And so I find that so many, myself in the past included, uh, would sit there and try and cram everything into the day and then get pissed off at the end of the day because you still felt you hadn't achieved anything. Because you'd gotten a lot done, but at no point in time had you really sat and celebrated the wins. Had you really been appreciative of what you actually have achieved? And did you really actually become present in any of those moments? It was just like, done, next, done, next. And yes, the adrenaline rush of that can be super, super awesome. But at the end of the day, if you're not actually relishing in the reward of what you've done and achieved, then the question is, did you really achieve it and was it really worthwhile spending that time? Was that time well spent? The interesting point with all of this and for myself I've been in exactly that same position as you've been working flat out trying to achieve and achieving um, so Maybe. back in 2003 I was working no shit 21 hours a day I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning I'd work till seven have a quick breakfast then I'd drive 100 kilometers to work a nine to five job finish work then I'd drive back 100 kilometers and then I'd work till midnight I did that for six months, mm. thinking that I could dig myself out of a shithole of a financial position that I was in. And you know what it did? Fuck all. Mm. It was absolutely, all it did was burn myself out, absolutely ruin my back, my body, over push, over limit, and not really achieve a whole lot more and probably sacrificing your time to make money and then sacrificing that money to try and buy some time back. Mm. Um, as you say, overachieving and over, uh, trying to do more and trying to do more and this is that constant do more get better results do more get better results whereas if we do more quality things do less but do it with quality mm. you've actually got a better shot of doing well i think when we start to look at this and and realistically there's of course clock time and and, and balancing into how the time sort of fits into your day Yes, essentially, technically, there's, there is clock time. There's 24 hours of clock time in the day. Yeah. And what you can do with that time can vary on your mental state. If you're erratic and you're not together and you're not balanced, you're going to be starting 10,000 different jobs and achieving none of them. Yeah. Stop, slow, become present, and we can start to piece by piece, start a job to finish it, start mm -hmm. a job to finish it, or be in a clear state of this needs to be done, then this needs to be done or while you're waiting on something you can come back to it when your mind is clear and you'll find that that 24 hours is well and truly enough mm. but also what are people choosing to do with their 24 hours like <laughs> i used to i've been dealing as a as a epigenetic profiler i help people with their health and trying to achieve their health and fitness goals and so what i would quite often find is that people would say i have no time 
And I'd actually sit there with them and go, cool, tell me about your day. And they'd get up and they'd stuff ass around and they'd, they'd get about their day and then they'd sit on their phone and then they'd go to work and they'd be on the bus and they, or they'd be on a tram or they'd be driving, whatever it was. And then they would be at work and then they would be on their way home and, and then they'd come home and they'd get dinner ready and they would watch TV for a few hours. And these are one of those, this is one of those things where I'd go and look at someone's day like that and go, if you really want more time and you really want to achieve more things, take note of what the things are that you really want to achieve. And then try and find the gaps of time at which you can compound your timing and what you're doing so you can be more effective. Um, like, you know, in just saying what I've said there, you could be listening to audiobooks while you're getting ready in the morning. You could be listening to podcasts and audiobooks or trainings or webinars while you're on replay. Like, I know so many of you out there are doing online things and they all have a freaking webinar that you have to watch every week. Even though I have webinars that I create myself, it still pisses me off. It's just so time consuming. But, a belief. There we go. And <clears throat> really going back to it, it's like you can find windows of time at which you can use your time best. Like, I used to drive from the Gap in Brisbane to Bribey Island four days a week to work and everyone was like wow that's so much time wasted and I was like actually on the contrary that's actually an hour and 15 minutes each way that I relish in the opportunity to listen to audiobooks to listen to recordings of the millions of webinars I had running at that point in time for all the different commodities of things I was trying to achieve and I could make phone calls to family that I seldom made time to catch up with so it's remembering we do all have 24 hours in the day but how smart and how um, how much tact are you putting into what you choose to spend your time doing? And prioritizing your time and, and finding what works and what is most important for you <clears throat> is probably the biggest thing. Mm. We were just speaking about this before. When we say prioritize your time, prioritize it to things that matter. Your family, your health, your, those, mind. Those, your mind, those sort of things. Stop prioritizing things that don't matter a shit. Stop prioritizing the overtime, the boss that doesn't give a shit, the, those sorts of things. And and when it comes back to you, start to put a priority. How many times people say, I don't have time to go to the gym? Because this is how it starts. Yeah, well, for me to go to the gym, I've got to wake up in the morning, I've got to have a shower, I've got to get the kids ready for school, make the kids lunch, <coughs> I've got to get the house cleaned, I've got to get this done, that done, this done, and then I've got to get to my gym shoes on, and got, then they get to go to the gym. Mm. All of us have the same load of shit to actually do to get us there. The difference is, is when I say, or when Shana says, I'm going to go to the gym, I go to the gym. Mm. That's, it's a one step. All of those little things, because the mindset of moving through that time is different. You can see where you're going. You're not trying to procrastinate it. You're not going, oh, yeah, it's not actually something I really want to do. And this isn't my priority. So, oh, yeah, then I have to get ready. I've got this to do and that to do. When you prioritize that time, when you sit with it, you're present and president. Ah. When you're present. <laughs> I'm president. <laughs> you, you could do a much better job. <laughs> when, when you're present with that time, it's one job, start to finish. I'm going to the gym. And you can think about that with anyone when it's, I'm going to the bar. I'm going to watch TV. There's all those 10,000 jobs that have to go on to get there. And it's the same for everyone. No one's worse off than anyone else. We've all got the same amount of hours, clock time in the day. Mm. But when you prioritize and find what works for you as a priority. And most people, I've, how many times have we got, I've got to be home by seven. Why is that? Oh, well, TV shows on. You know, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And what if are you you're allowing to rule your life? Yeah. And if you're putting that as a priority, and for, for us, we, we are extremely busy and we jokingly say, I don't know how people have a time for a job because I just couldn't fit it in. I'm too busy for that. But it's also because it's not a priority. Mm. I don't have, know how people have time to watch TV because it's not a priority yeah. to us. So and when, that's okay. Like whatever your priorities are, catalog them and figure out what they are. And I always say it's fun to play games with these things. Um, is like... What do you have to do in the day? What do you want to get done in the day? And then how can you make it into a fun game of achieving those things with joy and lightheartedness, not sitting there getting begrudging about what you have to do. There's no point is. getting those shits with your to-do list. You've got to do it whether you like it or not. So choose the things that you want to prioritize and how you're going to do them and find a way of making it fun and interactive and, and how you can achieve more and, and, and just find bliss in that state because you, you have to get these things done. So 
those who are productive the most are doing it with a state of joy or glee or presence. satisfaction presence. or presence. Yeah. Always presence in that. They're not sitting there begrudging it. When you're begrudging it, you're really taking away the magic. You're really ruining the joy. And to be honest, why are you doing it if you're not enjoying it? As, and I think for me, I like to just get a job finished, get a job started, get a job done. I don't like to procrastinate it because what it does when there's a job that's not finished, it clouds my mind. I like to have a clear state mm. of mind. So for me, when I start something, I'm like, no, this job needs to be finished. So I will do the job. Mm. I'll go out. I won't sit there and, and bugarise around and go, I've got 10 there. I'll, I'll just have another coffee. I'll just get in and do it and make that a priority. So that's the way I like to do it. Everyone's different, but I can be more present when I get through each job, get the thing done. Mm -hmm. I think the interesting part with all of the way we do this when it comes back to that, is there 24 hours in the day? Again, yes, there is. But is time a construct? Yeah, I think time is a construct because essentially... All we own is this present moment mm. and this one and this one and this one. Mm. We've made a, top, a, a clock time so that we can understand how to turn up to work on time, when to turn up to different things. We've set that up in that way so that as a society we can quite well understand what's going on. Mm. But essentially, there's one continuous present moment. That's the way I see it. If you've got different feedback, I am definitely open to it because <clears throat> that's I the way I love, choose to think. I definitely love always coming back to epigenetics. Just understanding that each and every one of you, each and every one of us are very different. And because we're talking about time, the construct about um, like how many of us read books and see these motivational speakers that get up and say, do everything in the morning. If you're not waking up early, if you need more time in the day, just get up early. Kind of like... Oh, kick them in the face because you're ruining society and you're ruining half of our humans and the truth is is that that works for a certain percentage of body shapes and types that destroys other bodies and types and aids and abets this whole plague of anxiety and depression that sweeps the earth because it puts upon expectations that some people are good enough and some people aren't there is a time of the day in which the body does the things. It's like this morning we had um, we got we slept in as we do when we like to, and we had our massage therapist rock up to the house. I know hard life, but <laughs> the point was normally I would go first and I'd leave Clint to fire us around and do what he wants to do and make his calls. And this time he went first. And what I found is that what what I know when he goes and does yoga or when he's out of the house, if I can get up. Potter around in whatever I feel like wearing, and I just, and I know this sounds funny, but if I can just fluff around the house in my own space and time and spend my first few hours barely looking at my phone, many of you will know quite often I will sometimes I'll enter you, sometimes I won't until that 11 o'clock because I don't want a human until 11 o'clock. And that's because for my biology, if I wake up slowly and I spend time being present in the moment, in my home environment, and I potter and I tinker and I make little wins like putting away the dishwasher. Now, for some of you, this sounds like death. But for some of us, our space, your space, if you can create comfort and ease and flow within your energetic direct space, and then sit down and plan your day and figure out what the heck you have to get done, and then you plan your attack, and then you execute it with, whilst allowing small pockets of time to be a buffer zone so you're not stuck time, 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 time. Because everything, guess what, life happens and sometimes your plan won't always work. This can be where a lot of people are falling short because they're like, gotta get up and do all the things and go to the gym. Actually, maybe not. Okay. And that's where a lot of people, I think, are stuck and they, they feel disconnected and disjointed with this societal expectation because they don't realise there's actually completely a healthy balance in another direction. Mm. I think what an uh, interesting point coming back to, to what the priority is. I don't know about anyone else, but I was not put on this planet to work 12 hours a day, 7 days a week for my entire life, work for the man to die anyway. That's not what I was put here for. Mm. And I challenge everyone to start thinking about the damn well reason they were put on this planet. Mm, delicious. Start thinking about that because if you think you were, you were put here to work, 
well, that's not what we're here for. I'm sorry. Have a deeper look. Take a bigger look. If you think you were put on this planet to run around and be busy all day, start thinking about it. Turn it inward. Change the way you think. If you think you were put on this planet to go around running after kids, cleaning up and making people damn sandwiches, that's not what you were here for. That's content and things that are going to go on at points in your life. But come back to it and realize that you were here to have a human experience and to live. Mm. To live fully and presently and learn and grow. That's what we were here for. That's what I was there and were put here for. Mm. My point with that is, stop getting caught up in the busyness. If you, if you realize that we're put here and boil it down to the essence, what we're here to do is become present and to be honest, the way I look at it is, actually discover who we really are that's our inner purpose. Mm. Our outer purpose is to do whatever we are doing fully. Mm. That means regardless what it is. If you're eating your food, be present. Enjoy every mouthful. Take the bites. Take it slow. That's what you're here for. That's your external purpose. If you're doing the, if we're sitting here and people say, Eckhart Tolle had this conversation with someone where, when they said, but I don't want to do, do work for, as an accountant for the rest of my life. And he goes, but you're not working as an accountant right now. Your external purpose is to do whatever you're doing right now fully. Right now we're on this couch and we should be here talking and being present fully. Mm. That's the external purpose. So whatever you're doing, doing it presently and fully. And the internal purpose is to recognize who you are inside. And what are you actually here to do? If you've got too much going on in your life, cut the shit out that's not serving you. <clears throat> and in this way, we can actually be more present, own your space, have more time because who doesn't want more time anyway? Wouldn't it be amazing if you went, you know what, I've, I've got some time just to go and lay on the beach. Wouldn't that be amazing mm. if you could just go, you know what, uh, how could I actually achieve that? Do less. It's simple. Yeah. It's the same as we talk about with finances. I talk about this a little bit. You want the easiest way to make money? Stop spending so much. That's the whole <laughs> easiest way to do it. Do less. There is a thousand things you can do. It costs you nothing to go for a walk in nature oh. and be present. It costs you nothing to be a good human. It costs you nothing to give someone a smile on your fa on their face. Those mm -hmm. things are free and they're the most joyful sort of things. You don't need to work more to have those things. You don't need to do the overtime to be able to have a better life. That is what society has told you and that is bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to call it as it is in the way I said. That is bullshit. Yeah. To do what society wants you to do, that's not what we're here for. We're not here. Again, we're, I'm going to stress that to the shit out. There is a balance. Again, we do have to pay your bills just in case you live to tomorrow, but we're here to live not just for today, but for this demo present moment. Mm -hmm. Because if you're stressing, if you're in a bad space and you die right now, that will be a shit, slow, painful death. So first of all, get comfortable with dying. It's going to happen to all of us. We do say this quite frequently. And then live presently. If you can get so comfortable with it that now's the moment, you're going to be able to live more presently. You're going to have a much better time and space continuum. You're going to be able to enjoy every single moment in a whole lot better space. Mm. That's from my experience. And I would love this to be a conversation because this is the way that I choose to think at the moment. I'm open to better options. Mm. I'm open to better options. It's something we definitely both say a lot is, you know, it's, it's, it's about what we're choosing. And in coming back to that 24 hour point in the beginning, and from what we've just said, you do have 24 hours. And what is the quality of the content you're choosing to put in that 24 hours? How does it truly make you feel? How does it enrich your life? Mm. How does it enrich other people's lives? And is it really what you want to be doing? And then are you okay with choosing that and for how long? And if not, what's it going to take for you to choose you and to choose better and to choose more for yourself that is more sustainable more loving more nurturing more connected and more present because that's when you actually fall in love with your life the most this is all not about <clears throat> quantity none of it's about quantity because you don't have a choice on the quantity of time you're going to have that mm -hmm. is in the way i see it your, your amount of life is determined regardless even if you choose to take it that's when you were going anyway the quality of life, you do have a choice on. You absolutely have a choice on. Everything you're doing is a choice. And a good friend of mine, Timmy B, said to me the other day, he said, do you get to, cho cho he said, do you feel lucky for this life we have? And I said, I used to think that way, but no, because I choose the life that I have 
every choice, every day. I wake up, I choose this, and my decisions that I make today define my tomorrows. Mm. All of us do. We're all responsible for that. And that's why we need to prioritize. Again, all of us need to have a good, solid look at the crap that's going on in our life and go, that's not serving me. And we all do. I do. We all need to do and go, that's not serving me. How can I fix this? How can I create more time? Because it's easy to create more money. You don't want more money. You want more time. You want more life. And you want more quality of life. Mm. Well, I do. I mm. know about the rest of you all. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So it's your 24 hours to choose what you do with it. And it's, it's your moment. life to it's choose not, what you it, do with it. And I think that it's not just that this 24 hours. Stop thinking of it as 24 hours. Start thinking of it as this damn moment. How can you make this moment better? How can you... Is that actually... Instead of having your kids in front of the TV or having your children sitting at home by themselves, is that actually choosing to spend a little more quality time yeah. with those humans you created? Is it about spending a little bit more quality time with your partner? Do you feel disconnected? Do you feel like there's not enough intimacy? Do you feel like there's not enough deep conversation? Do you feel like your workmates or your family, there's a disconnect and not enough good conversation? Those are the nourishing, nurturing points at which we really should be focusing our energy and our time and our day yeah. into nourishing because that's really actually what matters. No, I, I think that would be a really good point for anyone. And this is these conversations are tying in so well to each other. <laughs> and I would love to continue this even after the challenge is over. But I feel like mm. a lot of this is tying in. And when you look at it, prioritize your time. Start making a better plan. Start maybe making better decisions. This is there for all of us. And again, if you're not sure where to start, get some help. Look yeah. at the people that, that are doing, having the lifestyle that you want and then even improve that. And also... Ooh. And even better than that, don't take advice from people who are stuck in their own shit. <laughs> just word of warning, just stop doing that. If you have friends and family that you're like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this and they go, oh, I don't know. You shouldn't do that. That's scary. Or I've heard that that's bad. If they're not doing better and in a better lifestyle than you are, then don't listen to them. There's a whole lot of that, and I feel like we buy into the negativity, and our ego is defined by things that make us feel inferior or superior. Mm -hmm. So quite often when somebody says, nah, don't do that, don't do that, your ego can buy into that negativity and go, no, nah, no, I don't, I don't deserve, I don't, I don't, anything where it can tell itself a story and, and start some ownership. <coughs> become more present take some time to slow down mm. take some time to realize again where what you're here for and, and really live each one of these present moments and find a way to, to make them more enjoyable there's there's stuff you're going to do it doesn't matter what it is if you're an electrician if you're a coach or if you're a builder if you're i don't know what if, if you're, you're a parent yeah. i just love this I'm just, we're probably going to have to close it up pretty soon, but I used to love this. I remember talking about my big sister. She's an incredible mother. She has five children, Manny. I don't know how the fudge you do it, but you're amazing. But we used to talk about how the house would get messy and obviously begrudgingly telling the kids constantly, pick up your stuff. But it was like the conversation where I said, what about if you got your favorite songs on and you challenged the kids that in that time, they can make it fun. How can we all work together to make this thing and we can all dance and we can have fun? That's a parent being creative with the tasks at hand, the required things that need to be done, her being present with her children and connecting, but most of all, having fun in the way of doing it. And that's what I challenge you all to do. You've all got shit to do. How can you make it more fun? How can you make it more involving? How Bring can you make joy. it more connected and, and more joy? Bring yeah. more joy into every present moment. Mm -hmm. And there is so many ways to do this. What I keep thinking, and I, this comes back to me a lot, bring more joy into the situation. Any way that you think you can. <laughs> any, any way that you think you can. Have some fun with it. Do whatever you need to do because the serious part of this is none of us are getting out of this life alive. Mm. Stop acting like you are. Stop acting like you're going to get out of here alive. Enjoy yourself. Throw the glass of water in the house. Have some fun. Make a it's mess. Water. It can clean. It can all be cleaned up, mm. and you can start to enjoy each moment that little bit more. Mm. Stuff everyone that judges you. If people are judging you because your house is a mess, maybe if it's absolute filth, that might be different. But if it's a mess, if it's a mess, that's a house that's lived in. Yes. If your car is dirty, my my, I, my my last car, I washed it on its third wash. I didn't wash it. I got somebody else did it before I sold it. 
because having a clean car was not a priority to me no. because that was a car that we used. It was something we did. Whatever it happened to be, enjoy it. Let the kids make a mess. Stop putting importance on things that aren't important. Allow yeah. freedom of expression. Allow creativity. In the messiest chaotic moments is when quite often you'll find pure bliss and magic. Yeah. That's pretty damn awesome, I would say. Love to, your hear your <laughs> <laughs> love to hear your thoughts, guys, and we also love to know if you want to hear us continue this when this uh, 30 days is over, because we love it. We have fun. We have fun with this. We love these conversations. And uh, we love you guys too, so <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys to it while I get attacked. Much love. <laughs>